Now, a News 4 Investigates special. They would not be silenced. Get a cop here now! Families who say the state concealed the truth about the foster children placed in their homes. I told them it was criminal. Told through animation and from the families themselves, this News 4 Investigates special starts now. They are families who open their homes to children only to say they were put in danger as a result. Foster families who say they had no idea children placed in their homes by the state had been investigated for violence or sexual behavior. He came into their family at 15, tattooed on his arm and neck, considered by the state an emergency placement. Were you given any heads up by the state that this child had a violent background? Nope. Nothing? Nope. One night, as his foster family's outdoor camera was rolling, he stole their van and disappeared. The car was found, uh, but it was burned beyond recognition. It took them three days to find the VIN number on the frame. It was only after the van was destroyed that the family says they learned he had a history of auto theft and had been investigated for molesting a child. At that point, they stopped taking teenage placements from the Department of Children's Services. The danger is too great and you can't depend on the state to be transparent. And it isn't just this family. Over and over and over again, families tell News 4 Investigates the state placed children with violent or sexual behavior in their homes without disclosing their past. They might not be able to be arrested for it, but they should. In John Hagman's case, when a 17-year-old was placed in his home, the state provided this checklist, no history of destruction of property, no history of such offenses. Get a cop here now! So imagine Hagman's astonishment when he says without warning, the teen broke a TV, punched a door, and began smashing dishes. Listen. Is that him screaming in the background? Yes. All right, what's he doing? What is he doing? He's destroying the house is what he's doing. Remember how the state wrote that the teen had no history of violence? Look at what Hagman obtained after the teen's violent outburst. The teen's case history shows in May 2016, his behavior was described as destructive when he assaulted a DCS staff member and destroyed property at a DCS office. More than a year after that, the teen would destroy Hagman's kitchen. Do you remember what you said to DCS when you found this out? I told him it was criminal. Leslie Lang, who has three young children, says she allowed DCS to place a teenage girl into her home, a teen who later admitted she'd been investigated for molestation. DCS did not tell me. And both these families tell similar stories, one saying they had no idea that a teen had attacked a DCS staffer before being placed in their home. The other saying the state did not disclose the depths of the sexual abuse of an 11-year-old girl who was placed with them. After they adopted the girl six months later, they say she attempted to molest two boys. Our first instinct was to call DCS and say, you know, what in the world is going on? She just tried to molest two five-year-old boys. For weeks, News 4 Investigates repeatedly emailed and called DCS for an interview. Among our questions, the claims from all these families that the caseworkers are simply overwhelmed with too many children to place. They'll do and say anything they have to to get these kids out of their office and, and get them a bed to sleep in at night. Do we get it right all the time? No. Do we get it right most of the time? Yes. Saying she could not discuss individual cases by law, and many of them happened before she was commissioner, Jennifer Nichols at last agreed to answer questions. These families say that their caseworkers were not open with them about the backgrounds of these children. Truth and transparency with families is critical. If a family was not uh, fully advised you know, about, a, about the needs of a child, I'm sorry for that. I said a few minutes ago, do we get it right every time? No. Families say even if the commissioner is forbidden from publicly discussing their cases, she should answer to problems like this. Remember the teen who stole and burned the van? After that crime came this email from their caseworker asking them to sign a document that claimed they were aware of his violent background. 
she told us that her supervisor demanded that we need to sign this form. So they were ultimately asking you to sign that you were aware he had this violent background when in fact you never had. Right. The family's email response, we will not sign anything. Some of these families have documentation that clearly shows information was withheld from them. Okay, and you didn't hear me argue with you. I'm telling you, if that was done, it's wrong. People should know what they're getting into. And you know what? The children deserve. The children deserve to go into a home that is fully apprised of and ready to deal with whatever they bring to that home. After that story aired, we were contacted by a former DCS caseworker, and we had this question for her. You were able to see our story. Was any part of it inaccurate? No, every bit of it was true. That caseworker would then provide us with documentation of how she says the state is risking the safety of Nashville families who only want to help. Smashed walls, broken windows, consoles ripped apart. When these men signed up to be foster fathers, it's not what they expected. We didn't sign up to be lied to. We signed up because this is something we want to do to give back to the community. And it's not only parents saying DCS concealed the truth about the children coming into Davidson County foster homes. Why did you decide to come forward about this? In seeing the way the foster parents have been treated for years, it was very disturbing to me. Disturbing because this former longtime employee of DCS heard their frantic calls. The child attacked her and a big gash in her eye. The child had grabbed a knife, for which knife she had a knife cuts on both hands. This employee says, here's what you need to understand. There are levels that the state assigns children. Level one is the lowest risk. In Tennessee, when you hear the term DCS foster home, that means the family is trained only for level one kids. You're level one. Correct. So you thought you were getting kids that had no violent histories. Correct and instead you got up to level four. Yes. You heard right. Families who thought they'd only get nonviolent children say they were placed with kids with a much higher risk, even up to level four, the most trouble. These foster parents are not trained to deal with those type of children, which puts them at risk. It puts the children at risk. Internal DCS records on troubled children show it. Here's a child ranked at level three. Look, he's repeatedly placed in foster homes. There are a large number of children who are not foster home appropriate are being put in level one DCS foster homes because they don't have anywhere else to put them. The state's own numbers back it up. Foster homes from 2015 till 2019 have increased from 117 to 169. But look at the providers and homes considered therapeutic, meaning they're trained to handle the most troubled children. In 2015, they were up to 159. Last year, they're down to 130. In lieu of an interview, DCS issued a statement. Reading in part, there are times when case managers must find safe and immediate placement before assessments are completed and without prior knowledge of a child's full background. But case managers strive to make these placements work. All this foster father knows is that too often, what he was told was a nonviolent child ended with a call to police. One of the policemen asked me to come to the car, and when I went to the car, he showed me the child's record and showed me that this child had an extensive violent history. They knew that, but they didn't tell me. Not long after our investigations aired, the state released an audit of DCS, directly criticizing the agency for what News 4 Investigates had exposed. The burned out van, the broken dishes, the busted televisions, all examples of what foster families say happened when children were placed in their homes without DCS ever disclosing that the kids had violent histories. Families believe part of the problem, their caseworkers are overburdened with too many cases and desperately need to place children in homes, even if it means not disclosing the truth. In Tennessee, the average number of cases per DCS employee is only supposed to be 20. Our caseworker has 40 cases, 40. 
Now look at the audit where investigators found 35 times where workers had 40 cases. Again, double the amount of the 20 allowed. The department's own data showed that anywhere from 18 and a half to I believe 28% of those case managers had more than 20 cases. I have deep concerns about this department. Lawmakers and auditors say the concern for foster families is obvious. When too many cases are assigned to a case manager, that case manager just will not have the time necessary in every instance to devote to those children. DCS's commissioner says due to staff turnover and additional children that sometimes arrive overnight, some workers will have beyond 20 cases. There are always going to be outliers where people have more cases than they should. That's due to a number of different issues. DCS says they are monitoring monthly caseloads to make sure workers aren't overburdened. And this committee voted to allow DCS to continue operating as usual, something Representative Gloria Johnson found alarming. I was disgusted. I was scared for those kids. And I didn't feel good about what we did in there. Other parents also began to come forward, challenging the commissioner's claim that the troubles happened in the past and what happened to their family after the commissioner made that statement. She was supposed to be a welcome addition to a family already in love with fostering children. We're one of those, we, we would take them all if we could, you know. I mean, we, we love doing it. But hearing what happened to this family has this member of a state committee overseeing DCS questioning the agency's ability to keep children safe. I saw one of the foster parents say this is criminal. It should be criminal. The foster family in rural Middle Tennessee worked with the placement agency, contracted with DCS, and says they clearly told them what children they would not take. That was violent children, that was aggressively violent, and sexually aggressive children. Well, they assured us that we didn't have to worry about that. But it was only after a 10-year-old foster child came to stay with them did the family obtain this. An email detailing that foster child had been investigated a year earlier. That investigation found allegations of that girl sexually touching another child were substantiated through a special investigations unit in July 2019. The family says DCS didn't tell them or their placement agency until after she had repeatedly been among their children. Do you feel that the state is not being transparent enough for parents like you? I feel that the state is placing children and not being completely 100% honest about their backgrounds. That very next month, their six-year-old daughter came to them with a troubling story. The other little girl told her, said, this is our secret, you can't tell anybody. Their daughter then detailed abuse at the hands of the 10-year-old foster child. When you first hear it, you're, you're really upset. His claims echo what other families have told News 4 Investigates, that they had no idea of the violent or sexually aggressive histories of children that DCS placed in their homes, only to later have those foster children burn cars and damage homes. When we brought our findings to the commissioner last October, she said those were cases prior to her administration. The families who you're speaking to come with cases that were from years ago. But remember, the alleged abuse of this little girl happened after our interview with the commissioner. That's a huge mistake. Representative Gloria Johnson, who sits on the state committee, then in December blasted DCS for an audit saying caseworkers were at times overwhelmed says what happened to this girl is further proof that the agency's problems aren't in the past. Our commissioner needs to answer for that and th she needs to tell people how it's never going to happen again. News 4 Investigates repeatedly asked for another interview with the commissioner, but was told state law prohibits her from discussing individual cases. Although Johnson voted against it, this committee voted last December to allow DCS to continue on with no further oversight. It's the same month this family's daughter had to start therapy as a sex abuse victim. A six-year-old's telling us things that a six-year-old should never know. 
Finally, lawmakers stepped in, forming a bipartisan caucus, asking foster and adopted parents to bring their concerns directly to them, seeing if legislative action can help lift their burdens. Burdens, our investigation found, often caused by the state itself. It was criminal. We brought you their stories, foster family after foster family, telling News 4 Investigates the State Department of Children's Services did not share the true sexual and violent histories of children placed in their homes, resulting in trauma for the parents and damage to their properties. But the executive director of the state's Foster Adoptive Care Association says the children are suffering too. If foster parents are blindsided and children then removed from homes, she says it means their troubled histories get longer and longer. I know that uh, children don't deserve to be just scary descriptions on paper. We're struggling in Tennessee to find foster parents. It's why Representative Jeremy Faison has launched a caucus that met for the first time this year, encouraging adoptive and foster parents to tell members of the caucus what changes are needed. You've reported on this several times, and so I think what we can do is start shedding light on that. With continued scrutiny on DCS following a scathing comptroller audit, Faison says he wants to focus now on the parents, many who've had to hide their identities, but wanted their stories told. Lewis Brandi, he said sunlight is the greatest disinfectant. What if we start opening up the dialogue across Tennessee? It's something that's personal for Faison. After all, he fostered a child who ultimately became his son. And that's what I'm trying to do. Let's identify the challenges, identify the problems in Tennessee through this caucus, and then say, all right, we've got them identified. Now what do we do about them? And News 4 Investigates will continue to report on these families' concerns. And if we can help tell your family's story, if you've been silenced, please reach out. Thank you for watching.